Hey, good morning. It's Dr. Kate Walker. Welcome to our Thursday 30. It is October 29th and uh, welcome to the Texas Counselors Creating Badass Business Group Thursday 30. If you cannot hear me, please post in the thread. I'm going to try to keep eye contact instead of trying to look around and see if I'm on. So I will be able to see you guys over here. If you have any questions or comments, throw it in the thread. If you can't hear me, just say, hey, Kate, we can't hear you where we can't see you. You know the drill. All right, so you guys know I love to give away free stuff, but it's the paid stuff that pays the bills. So please stick around because today I'm going to talk about the mistakes you kind of have to make in order to grow, right? We know that growth comes through pain, unfortunately. Like I don't have a secret recipe or a magic pill that can help you grow from level one to level two to level three, right? And this level system is roughly based on the developmental model. So when we think of level one, we think of a beginner, right? And we get to be beginners all the time, right? So even in your master's program, you're a beginner. Even when you graduate, you're a beginner. When you're a brand new supervisor, you're a beginner. In fact, there is this theory out there that it takes something like 10,000 hours to be an expert, roughly, give or take, I'm not sure. But we all get to be level one. It's like I told my kids, everybody gets to be eight years old. Everybody gets to have hot dogs for breakfast and eggos for dinner, right? But not when you're 17, right? So here we are. I don't know where you are in your business. I know we've got newbies on this I call it a channel. Is it a channel? This isn't TV. I know we have newbies listening. I know we have trained experts listening. I know we have people in all stages of business listening. And so today I am going to talk about some mistakes that unfortunately you're probably going to need to make. And this is one of the reasons I don't do a lot of business coaching because I know when I tell people things to avoid or I tell people what, you know, things that I've done to avoid, sometimes everybody just needs to make their own mistakes. They have to see it through and that's okay, right? I'm a big believer in learning by experience. I know that's what I had to do. And I actually share a lot of my mistakes in a lot of the materials that I put out in the book that I wrote, uh, My Next Steps, Create a Counseling Career You'll Love. I talk about the mistakes that I've made and that I grew from. And so mistakes aren't always to be avoided, but you know, I try to help you along the way. So like I said, the free stuff is great, but it's the paid stuff that pays the bills. So let me talk to you about what I really sell, which is my 40 hour supervisor training, dual license for anyone LPC LLC. LMFT who has who's met their educational requirements and you're ready to become a supervisor my fully online course will let you do that asynchronously on your time it's about 90 days LPC limit is 90 days LMFT it's give or take but you can do it at your own pace it's a great course also, October 26th, we had an amazing speaker, Janie Stubblefield, rock star LPC board member and LPC supervisor, who talked to the Texas Supervisor Training monthly consultation group. She talked to us about trends, she talked about ethics, she talked about mistakes that she sees supervisors making. November 30th, we're going to have another amazing speaker that's going to interest you guys. It's Blaine Hummel. He's an LPC associate who is also an attorney, and he's going to talk to us about that whole thing with W-2s and 1099s and how do we hire our associates and our supervisees? How do we make sure that they're following the law while they're being employed or working as contract staff. He's going to help us understand the difference and where the law to our, you know, about our license applies and where the federal law and state laws regarding working and employment apply. So don't miss out. If you're a supervisor, it's for supervisors only. Blaine's the only non-supervisor getting in. This is happening the week after Thanksgiving, Monday morning, November the 30th, 8 a.m. Also, I am going to be presenting a pre-conference workshop Wednesday, November 11th from 8.45 a.m. to 5 p.m. at six and a half CEs for supervisors and ethics. And it's for the Texas Counseling Association Professional Growth Conference. It's a pre-conference workshop, November 11th. You got to sign up for the conference to go to the pre-conference workshop, but it's going to be awesome. I'm also presenting with Cindy Doyle, the amazing Code for Couples podcaster. With uh, She's going to be presenting with me, Embracing Your Unique Counselor Identity and Building a Badass Business 
Again, you have to register for the TCA Professional Growth Conference in order to attend these amazing presentations. I will also be on Julia A. Rose Farewell to 2020 Tour. I'll be presenting Goal Setting and Self-Care Our Friends Tools to Grow Your Business and Save Your Life. Um, all of this is coming up in the next few weeks, so stay tuned. I'm really looking forward to presenting at all of those things. And... I think that's it. I think that's all the commercials. So that must mean it's time for shout outs. Let's look and see all the badasses that have joined the group. And oh yeah. So we got a ton of new members. We've got Amber Gist. We've got Ann Nest. We've got Adriana Lewin. Chelsea Lurie, Nisha Santellis, Tia Parsley, welcome, Lisa Petty Danley, Christine Jaculik Kobes, and Shalitha Miller Robinson. Welcome to our group. Now let's get to work. You're going to find a lot of stuff in here to help get you going. I noticed this week that people are posting a lot about the new LPC associate title. Whoop, whoop. That's awesome. I noticed uh, we had someone post a video. They're trying out a video to promote their services to their clients and they welcomed our comments. I still got people. Remember, if you post your website in this thread and you want me to go review it, I'm happy to do that. So post your website in the thread and I will go tell you two things I love and one struggle I have with it, something to improve so that you can grow your business and get clients in your door. All right, let's talk about some of the mistakes you have to make, right? Um, I think the biggest mistake that I see new counselors making is the good idea fairy. So the good idea fairy is, uh, I actually learned about this from my husband. I think he calls it the good idea fairy in the army. We got hit on the head by the good idea fairy. And what the good idea fairy does is she wakes you up in the middle of the night, or he, he makes you kind of lose track of time in the shower, or, you know, when you're listening to your favorite podcast in the car, or driving down I-45 or I-35 or I-10, you get the, the good idea fairy, right? It also happens when you're having coffee with friends and there's this synergy and there's this flow and you're like, whoa, wait a second. This is a great idea. Somebody has to do this. Well, no, they don't. <laughs> Sometimes these good ideas, they may not need to happen or they may not need to happen by you, right? So one of the things that the good idea fairy can look like, they can give you ideas for a course, a product, a new specialty, a new certification. One of the early, one of my favorite mistakes that I made early on was I decided that I needed notepads for my clients. And the, the notepads were like colorful. They had like, you know, kind of like a stoplight. There was a red, yellow, green. And under the red were things to stop. Under the green were things to go. And the yellow were like things that, you know, you know, don't maybe, I don't know. Anyway, I spent like 150 bucks I didn't have on these notepads and I didn't really have a plan. Like I didn't have a website set up with a store. I didn't know if I was going to sell them. So, you know, it was like a, a little, I call them tchotchkes, right? So it was just a little thing I was going to give away like I could afford that as a new practice owner. And, you know, I, I did, I gave it away uh, as a notepad. And then I was like, um, wait a second, I'm running out of these notepads. Then <laughs> I just like maybe write a note and give like one sheet of paper to my client because I was trying to save them. And now, you know, 15 years later, I look and I'm like, I, every once in a while, I'll run into one of these notepads and I'm thinking, okay, how many things have I done that cost money that had little to no return? right? And it, they were wonderful ideas. And I, I don't regret the notepads and the uh, several other crazy little ideas I had along the way. I'm sure there were like some stress balls and some super cool pins in there somewhere because it's exciting. You're starting your new business. Promotional folks love us, right? They want to show us all the beautiful pictures of the pins and the stress balls and the thumb drives and the things that we can do. But those are mistakes that you don't need to make, right? When you're starting your business, you have to look at what everything will do. Why is this necessary? Can you afford a goodie bag? Or what do they call it when you're at the Oscars, right? You get the bling bag or whatever. Is that really something you can afford? 
Um, another thing that I do and I'm, I'm guilty of, I'm a deconstructor reconstructor. So when you ask me to clean my room when I'm 12 year old Kate, I'm literally going to take my whole room apart, put it in the hallway and put it back together again, right? Super inefficient. And it makes it to where I dread doing, you know, basic cleanup, which is why I'm not cleaning my house right now. But anyway, that's another story. One of the things that you can avoid is spending money on redoing your website again. All right. I know that you went and looked at 14 websites and you just got a great idea that someone else is doing. Is it a little tiny plugin? Is it something that you can call your web designer to just fix a little bit? Or does it really require you to redo the entire thing? Y'all, when I got my Kate Walker training website up April 19th, uh, April 2019, it was wonderful for about four months. And then someone told me about this other amazing learning management system. And I was like, oh no, I have to switch. I called my web designer who's been with me for about 15 years. And she's like, Kate, seriously, you're going to lose all your data. This is going to cost you another X amount of dollars. Think about this. And thank goodness someone had, you know, I had someone in my face really letting me know and making me stop and think, whoa, wait a second. So that website redo. Yes, swag bags. That's exactly what it is, Jesser. Thank you. So yes, and needs versus wants. Perfect, Julia Aro. So when you're looking at this website and you're thinking about redoing it or remodeling it, think about every hour that's going to cost you. Remember in the Kate Walker world, in our badass business world, time and money are the same thing. You have an hourly rate. And so every hour that you spend on something costs you money. That's not a giveaway. So the good idea fairy, she's a beautiful, beautiful thing. We want her to come visit us occasionally, right? And then occasionally we got to put the earbuds in and tell her to keep walking. Number two, mistake you're probably going to have to make and learn the hard way stuff you don't need the age of paper and print is is pretty much over i mean when i back in the day i guess pre-march when i would go to a conference or i would go to a networking event we were taking pictures of each other's business cards i've had the same business cards for about 10 years i haven't had to buy new ones because people will take a picture of my business card so when you think about business cards, when you think about flyers, when you think about door hangers, when you're thinking about, you know, t-shirts to shoot out of a cannon at the high school football game, think twice, right? That is a single use item. It's probably going to be tossed. And I don't know. I mean, I, I guess back in the day I did. I thought I did. I had an extra hundred bucks to spend here and there. Um, so things you don't need, uh, new pillows for your office, new drapes for your office, new couch. I mean, I will use a couch until literally I can see through it, right? My clients can't cause they're sitting above it. Right. But when I'm sitting in my little rocking chair and I'm looking at the couch, I, I can kind of see through it. Then I know, okay, it's going to be time soon, but I do have a brown marker and I can always make that look better. And so here's the thing, you're going to tell yourself redecorating your office is self-care. It makes you feel better, but there's some real clinical reasons to keep it exactly the same, right? The element of counter transfer, I'm sorry, transference that your client has toward you, sometimes that is uh, relies on sameness, right? So if they haven't seen you in two years and they walk back into the same space and it looks exactly the same, there's an element that helps them pick up where they left off. So redecorating the office doesn't necessarily have a clinical need to it. Um, also, there's this idea that, you know, in a like in a classroom, in a teacher's classroom, it's the same thing. If you just turn everything upside down after the holidays, you're going to have about two weeks of chaos because the kids are trying to get oriented. In fact, that's what the big box retail stores do. They'll actually tell their employees, okay, we're going to flip aisle four with aisle three. And the reason they do that is it causes the customer to look harder, right? It causes chaos. And then the customer will buy more things because they can't find what they're looking for. So when you decide to redecorate, buy new stuff, get new vases, new plants, new pillows, new this, whatever, remember that's not necessarily good clinically. And you might try to justify that, but 
I can't stop you because how exciting is it to go into business and you finally get to redecorate your office? How exciting is it to go and pick out the colors and the ambiance? Wait, not ambiance, aesthetic, right? That's what, that's what all the kids are calling it. The aesthetic for your office, it's super fun. So I'm sure it's a mistake that most of the newbies are gonna have to make and yeah, you know, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, it's, it's fun to just think that there's something new there uh, that, that kind of brightens things up. Um, okay. I was saving this one. So number three, one of the things that can really, that, that are mistakes most of you will have to make are unnecessary partnerships, unnecessary partnerships. So here's a secret, big practice, small practice will usually net about the same, right? It, 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 now there are ways of managing and there are ways of operating, but sometimes what happens with a big practice is you get twice the liability for half the money, right? You've got a lot of people bringing in a lot of money and you're having to spend a lot of time doing 1099s and paychecks and paying for ancillary staff and bookkeepers and you know, uh, structural equipment and things to, to sort of make sure business goes smoothly. And then you've got these folks who are doing business and you don't know how, how they're doing, right? And that's okay. I mean, we wanna trust our colleagues but sometimes you don't make the same amount of money just by having a bigger practice, right? And even going into business with someone doesn't really make any sense in our business, right? When you go into business, let's say you, you're gonna, you and your neighbor are gonna open some tanning salons, right? That's like my favorite example, I don't know why. Well, you're gonna buy stuff. And that's the, the real world justification for a partnership is investing, right? You wanna invest in equipment. You're gonna invest in tanning bags. You're gonna invest in a building. And then the idea is there will be dividends over time. And at the end of the year, you will give yourselves bonuses and everybody's gonna make more money. And the investors are happy, you're happy, your clients are happy. In counseling, there's just not quite the same justification, right? We're not buying a huge piece of equipment, right? Maybe a building, and that's kind of cool, right? If you and your partner are gonna both invest in a building and you're gonna split those closing costs and those down payments, and you're gonna split the rents and give yourselves bonuses, but you can't really do that with your client income because that runs into fee splitting, right? Now, I'm not gonna get into that today, but there is a way to do that. But remember, when you have a partnership and there's not a thing, right? There's not like a, a thing that you guys are gonna all buy together go in and then this thing will increase in value so you can sell it later and everybody makes money you know splitting the work or splitting duties sometimes that just leads to resentment now that's another mistake i cannot stop you from making because it's lonely a lot of us like to go into business with our friends because it's just it's a lonely business out there it's isolating and sometimes it's just easier to have your friends around or to have someone to go to happy hour and, and kind of just commiserate about the week or the employees with it feels good to not be alone in business so i can't stop you from making the decision to have a bar bad partnership um, those are mistakes that are hard to avoid. They're usually expensive, especially if you sign paperwork. Remember, a contract with a partner is like a marriage. It has to be dissolved legally and it will cost you money to dissolve any kind of a partnership that has been established legally. So think really, really hard. I mean, would you marry this person? Would you marry this partner? Do you love how they do business? Do you love how they keep their car? You know, to look at how they do business in other parts of their life. If you're too afraid to ask them about their personal financials, you probably don't wanna go into business with them, right? Because business is serious when it comes to money and time, right? If it costs you time, that's gonna make you resentful because you're not able to go on vacation or spend time with your family. If it costs you money, well, kind of speaks for itself, right? Resentment over money destroys friendships. So, as I said, think really, really hard about going into business with a friend or forming unnecessary partnerships because we have one of the best businesses on the planet with the lowest overheads. We can start with a used couch, a used computer and rented office space. We have like zero startup costs. You don't really need a partner. So 
have coffee with someone in this group, reach out, ask someone with a big practice. I would love it if my big practice owners would post in the thread if they're interested in helping newbies grow and create a big practice because it's a, it's an art. There's an art to it. And, it, you know, don't recreate the wheel. Ask somebody who's already doing it because I know that there are some folks in this forum who do it and they do it really, really well. All right. Um, and bottom line is with partnerships, ask yourself, what's in it for you? What's in it for you? Are you going to have more time or less time? Is it going to be more expensive or less expensive? Ask yourself if you will be able to bonus yourself at the end of every year based on rent, not necessarily client income. All right. Number five, big mistake. I should have a David Letterman countdown, right? You guys don't pay yourself first, right? You get so wrapped up in these clients and they're coming in the door and it's so exciting and I have to have this money to pay my groceries. I have to have this money to pay my bills. You have to have money for your disabled years above ground. You're going to be disabled before you die, God willing, right? Most likely, most of us will be disabled before we die. Those years have to be financed some way. I don't know how much they'll cost in 20 years, 30 years, next year, okay? So paying yourself first, what does that look like? Making sure that you're paying for health insurance, making sure you're budgeting for disability insurance, making sure that you have sat down with a financial advisor and you have gotten to know them and trust them so that you can hand them your money at the end of every month or at the end of the year and they can explain things like a SEP IRA for small business owners. You have that person so that you can pay yourself first. Pay yourself before you buy the groceries. Pay yourself before you pay the mortgage. Pay yourself before you do anything. If you cannot live on 80% of what you make, you need more clients, all right? 80% of what you make, and then 20%, 10% can go to your uh, savings and your all these things we're talking about, and 10% can go to a donation or, or however you wanna do that. You'd, but challenge yourself in 2020. We got nothing else to do, right? We're trying to survive. Uh, a pandemic, we're, we're in the middle of election, why don't you challenge yourself and see if you can live on 80% of what you make, I dare you. Okay, next mistake I cannot stop you from making, quit taking every speaking gig that comes along, quit taking every opportunity, every person that asks you, hey, can you do a CE for us for free? Hey, can you talk to our group for free? Hey, can you come teach this for free? Unless there are potential clients in that audience, think twice. Everything that comes out of your mouth is a marketing statement. And go back and look at my Thursday 30s talking about creating a marketing team. Everyone you meet becomes a part of your marketing team. So of course, if the group you're speaking to, if it's a PTO and you're looking out at 30 potential clients, yeah, you want to go speak to them. But if your audience is a bunch of uh, you know, freshmen in high school, uh, they can't really be your clients, right? I mean, their moms can call you and say, hey, she thought you were great and we really, right? But it's, a, it's, it's not necessarily, I mean, yeah, you want to do it once or twice a year, awesome. But be very careful have, how you give away your time, your pro bono. And we have good hearts. We have big hearts as counselors, but giving it away, giving it away isn't always the way to go, especially you're going to be exhausted. You're a new business owner, right? So I cannot stop you from making that mistake. I've made that mistake and I've had to be very, very picky about who I give my time to, how I give my time away. Of course, I still do pro bono. I still give free supervision. There are still some things that I do for free, but I'm very strategic now about the things that I do for free because I'm thinking about, okay, am I creating my marketing team? All right, I got to wrap it up. So let's talk about all the mistakes I cannot stop you from making. Getting hit on the head by the good idea fairy and acting on it. Buying stuff you don't need. Engaging and entering into bad or unnecessary partnerships. Taking every gig, speaking, teaching that comes your way, no matter what. And finally, number five, I can't stop you from not paying yourself first. 
but it's a big mistake and I want you to fix it quickly. So in order to level up, you may need to bump into all of these things. You may need to have the scraped knees from, from tripping over these mistakes. And I respect that, right? That's how I grew. I made these mistakes. I've grown. I know better. Will I continue to make them? Probably, but hopefully they will be less expensive and less time consuming. All right, I got to go. November is going to be all about advocacy. We have a big election coming up, folks. Your voice counts. I voted. Have you, right? It's all over next Tuesday. That's it, right? So we're going to have new leadership. We've got, we've got a new legislative session in Texas starting in 2021. It's time to start rallying the troops, the troops about the things that are important to you. We saw what happened with the social workers, how that rule just kind of slipped in there really quickly. And then when people caught wind that somehow that the, the protections against uh, folks with uh, disabilities and uh, we could, the prohibition against discrimination had quietly slipped away, people went bonkers and they heard us. They heard our voices the rules back in protecting that population, protecting us. And so I want you to know how important it is in November in this group, we are going to talk about ways that we can advocate. This will grow our business. This will make our profession better. So go vote, go do your civic duty, go do your, your population duty. And I have, will see you guys next week. It is, oh my gosh, it's 9.57. This has been Dr. Kate Walker with your Thursday 30. Have a great day.